So, no more praying? Mm -hmm. So, it appears like we are on we are live right now, so real quick, whoever's watching on the chat box, whether it's on Facebook or here on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, in the chat, just type one so I know that you're there. Type one, say yes, something, just so I know that it is live and you're watching. Sweetest Anna. It's not Anna anymore. The true Anna anymore. It's the sweetest Anna is there too. Mm -hmm. All right. Who else do we have watching? Yeah, there's five people. All right. Janelle, you're on as well. Great. Let me make sure everybody's there. All right, so here's what's going to happen, so you guys know. Um, you got, Unfortunately, I can't control you, but I'm going to trust you blindly, <laughs> the ones that are home. And I'm going to trust that you're not using the book. Right, Anna? The true Anna, apparently. Because she made fun of somebody using the book from home, right, Denise? Isn't that what happened? So make sure you guys are not using. This is to test yourselves truly. So, um, because this is like a practice exam uh, or a replica of the exam, what I want you guys to do that's very important, and this goes for you as well, is make sure you have no distractions. So, no cell phones. Cell phones away. Uh, same thing as if you were here in class. Um, if you have TV on or if you have radio on, please turn it off. We are going to fully focus on the way the questions are asked and try to... Uh, understand uh, the questions, okay? So, if you have any questions while I'm asking, I'm going to give you enough time to answer. What I want you to do, if you have a question on the chat box, whether it's on Facebook or it's on YouTube, on the chat box, I want you to type the question that we're going over. So, if it's question one, just put one dash and whatever your question is, all right? Uh, I don't need you to answer me right now. To what the quest the answers are as we go so the way it works is i'll read it to you for instance give you an idea of the very first one is uh which of the following is not considered improvement to land okay so which of the following is not considered improvement to land i'm going to give you the answers sewers roads building or crops okay so we're going to treat this as if you were in class. The difference is nobody's going to be jumping at giving me the answer. I want everybody to answer it as if you were in the exam. So you're going to write it down. I'll wait because the other Anna just got here. So I'll wait until they're settled. You're giving instructions. Okay. All right, so as I was saying, um, I want you to write it down and answer uh, honestly and truly. Uh, what do you think the answer is? We're not jumping like in the quizzes to try to see who's going to be who. Right, it was so quiet this morning. Right, Stephanie? Yeah. Um, so we're not trying to see who's going to be, be who right now. Is you testing yourself. So 
Answer this one. Which of the following is not considered an improvement to land? A, sewers, B, roads, C, building, or D, crops? Write down the answer. I'm giving you a few seconds. I'm going to try to help you pace yourself throughout the exam. Answer is now you can answer on the chat. What is the correct answer you guys got? D. D as in David. <laughs> All right, perfect. Oh, Francie's here too. Great. So D as in David. Why? Because crops is what? Crops. It's temporary. That's one of the things. It's personal property. Temporary. Something that's going to be removed. It's not part of the improvement to land. Not something that's going to be fixed to the land. Right? Perfect. Moving on to number two. It says right here, to the seller's agent, the buyer is properly described as, and look how the question is being asked, to the seller's agent. So they're asking the one representing the seller, the buyer is who? So the buyer is probably described as a client, as a customer, as a principal, or a fiduciary. Write down your answer. And guys, at home, make sure you put number two, dash, and then your answer. This way I know you're following me, okay? All right, and the correct answer is? B. B. B as in boy, write down the answer, B as in boy. So, remember, it's to the seller's agent. The buyer is the one that's not being represented by you, therefore, they are a customer, not a client, right? If it asks you about the seller, then the seller is your client, is your principal, your fiduciary. So all the others, this could have been, um, to the sales agent, the sellers, all of these except, right, as well. Could have been something like that. Okay, then the answer would still be uh, E. Very good. Three, which appraisal approach computes the value of the land separately from the buildings? Which appraisal ap approach computes the value of the land separately from the buildings? So, A, cost approach. B, income capitalization approach, C, market data approach, or D, market analysis. Write down your answer. And the correct answer is? A. Correct answer is A as an apple. I was just giving them enough time at home. So, correct answer is A is an apple. Funny, they answer as soon as I say A. <laughs> On their behalf, there's sometimes a lag. I know there is. I'm just joking. <laughs> just getting up for the crew. <laughs> <laughs> so, why is the correct answer A? Because in the cost approach, we're going to appraise land as its value by itself, and then the improvements completely separate. Okay? Sandra says it's the delay. Fine, Sandra. That's your excuse. I got it. It's she the snow. <laughs> well, she heard me. She heard you? That's why? Yeah. Okay. You can hear a lot in the back. I know. People don't understand that in the back you can hear everything. So, uh, cost approach, like I said, it handles all these. Income capitalization approach, it's about income. Not about land, not about the building. The market data approach, that's the sales comparison. We're comparing properties that sold recently. And in the sales comparison, we use the market analysis. So C and D are pretty much within the same thing. Okay? So the correct answer is cost approach because it appraises land and then the building by itself. Okay? Four. 
a person who has absolute control, absolute control of a parcel of real estate is said to own a leasehold estate, a fee determinable, a life estate, or fee simple. Write down your answer. A person who has absolute or full powers or all rights to a property, right, is said to own the leasehold estate, fee determinable, life estate, or fee symbol. And the correct answer is? D. D as in David. Fee simple. It's simple. It's yours. Nobody else's. Now, fee simple or fee simple absolute means exactly the same thing. So every time you see absolute, is total powers over somebody else's, over, over a particular property. So you own the property in fee simple. So you can do whatever you want. You, when you die, you can pass it along to your heirs, right? You can sell independently each rights that come with the property, right? And the other ones, there's stuff you can't do. Like fee determinable, you're limited to certain restrictions. You got it? Fee simple, it's simple, it's yours, full rights. Five. Jim Thomas lets his neighbor, Shirley Blank, store her camper in his yard for a few weeks. So he lets her store the camper there. He does not charge rent. He has given Blank A, an easement, B, an encroachment, C, an estate in land, or D, a license. Write down your answer. Are you guys seeing how important it is for you to pace yourselves? Right? Because some answers might seem like that's the correct answer, right? Okay. Phones away, please. Hide them. Unless you have an emergency. No, no. Away. Completely away. I need your full focus. At home, if you're watching, same thing. No phones. She did so well today this morning. Anyway. So, five. The correct answer is D as in David. A license or privilege or permission was given. It was not a right. So an easement could not be. Right? It was not an encroachment because that's illegal. That means without permission. Right? And a state land means ownership. Do we have ownership? No. So permission or privilege only. Just like a driver's license and real estate license, can this be revoked? Yes. Yes. So he can say, Jim Thomas can say, Shirley, come get your camper. Get out of here. Can Shirley do anything about it? No. Six. The HUD-1 statement, HUD-1 statement, will still be used for a mortgage secured by a conventional loan purchased, uh, used to purchase a single-family dwelling, single-family dwelling financed by an FHA-insured loan, a duplex in which the purchaser will live, financed by the VA guarantee loan, or a reverse mortgage. HUD-1, or closing statement, write down the answer, is still used for mortgages secured by. Now, even if you do not know the answer, I'm giving you enough time to answer this. Even if you do not know the answer, you can use process of elimination. What does that mean? Look at all the answers. All of them have one thing in common, except the last one, okay? If you look at it, all of them talk about purchase, except the last one. All of them have some somehow a relationship to, uh, except for the first one in this case, to a government-sponsored loan, except the last one. So the correct answer is the last one, D, reverse mortgage. See, we now use TRID, right? The TILA and RESPA integrated disclosures. And because we, we use TRID, right, instead of having HUD-1, GFE, or TILA disclosures, 
we have uh, LE, which is loan estimate, and we have CD, which is the closing disclosure, right? So these are the document in the beginning, LE, document at the end, CD. For reverse mortgages, we still use HUD-1, GFE, and TILA. What was your question? I was just confused by that because I had one for usually used for reverse mortgages. Oh, that's so, what it is. It's still yeah. used. It's still used. So it's the new format is what you're talking about. No, no. So as of October 3rd, 2015, we now have TRID. Yes. The loan estimate and the closing disclosure. But TRID applies only to purchases. Okay. okay. A reverse mortgage is not a purchase. Right. Okay. Or stuff that's not ordinary this is or uh, the first three are ordinary things they're so, residential yeah purchase. so it would be refinance or reverse mortgage would we'll still use the hard one right okay okay at home they're on point the three people that are answering they're on point because they're using the book <laughs> it's a joke don't get offended just because of uh, the and you know, honestly when she said that the last time i wasn't even thinking about the the fact the that you could have the book, the book. <laughs> no the back of the book oh <laughs> seven a legal description that defines the boundary lines is called this one of course geodetic survey right meets and bounds rectangular survey or recorded Plat. Write down your answers. A legal description that defines the boundary lines is called geodetic survey, meets and bounds, rectangular survey, or recorded plat. And the answer for seven is B. B as in boy, meets and bounds, where the property lines meet and create boundaries. Very good. Eight. Which of the following is considered dual agency? Dual agency means that we're doing what? Broker acting for both the buyer and seller. Brokers cooperating in multiple listing service. Broker listing and selling to the same person. Or broker salesperson, I'm sorry, salesperson listing two houses on the same street. Write down your answer. Eight says, which of the following is considered dual agency? The broker acting for both the buyer and seller, broker cooperating in the multiple listing service, broker listing and selling to the same person, or a salesperson listing two houses on the same street. And the correct answer is? A is an apple. Dual agency means we represent both the buyer and the seller. Very good. Shouldn't it be disclosed to an agency? Absolutely, but right now they're just asking, they're not asking if it's legal or illegal, mm -hmm. they're just asking what would be considered dual agency. The fact they represent both. If they're asking what's illegal or legal, then disclosed, okay? okay? So we can enter into dual agency provided that we disclose, makes it legal, okay? Um, so there's seven people watching, there's only a few answering. So what I want to say is, if you're watching from your phone, make sure you flip it or put it on the desktop uh, option. So there's an option on your phone to go to desktop, and that will give you um, permission to chat, to answer as you're watching this, okay? So, uh, nine, it says, which of the following is a lien that does not need to be recorded? Which of the following is a lien that does not need to be recorded? Money judgments, real estate taxes, a tax deed, or voluntary lien. See, you guys are too quick in grabbing that pen and writing it down. Wait until I get to D because you never know. I'm telling you, sometimes, not in this case, but sometimes the answer is D and is so similar to B or A. Which lien does not need to be recorded? A lien is a financial claim against the property, right? What lien does not need to be recorded? The answer is? Real estate taxes do not need to be recorded. Why? Because they're there forever. 
It's not like you buying a house don't know that you have to pay. It. Because mortgage has to be recorded. Mortgage needs to be recorded because whoever's buying the house needs to know, hey, that needs to be paid off. Taxes, no, it's forever. Okay. Damn taxes. I know. That's Every bad. year, brand new bill coming up soon to a city near you. <laughs> <laughs> forever and ever. Yeah. Forever and ever. All right, Janelle, I assume that that was B. Uh, was for nine, right? Nine B. Ten. The term depreciation refers to the value of real estate after the expiration of its useful life, the loss of value due to any cause, cost incurred to modernize a building, or capitalized value of rental losses. The term depreciation refers to the value of real estate after the expiration of its useful life, the loss of value due to any cause, costs incurred to modernize a building, or capitalized value of rental losses. And the correct answer for depreciation is B as in boy. Yes. Depreciation is a loss of value. Like, I have to maintain this after a while. I have to either paint it or even replace the sheetrock. Plumbing needs to be updated at one point. So depreciation is the loss of value over time due to any cause or condition. Okay? That's for tax purposes. Depreciation. What did you answer? Do you know D? D. So rental losses have nothing to do with depreciation. There'll be an expense or vacancy, actually. So vacancy losses. Okay. Depreciates her funds. Her account yes. depreciates. <laughs> All right. 11. Cool. At least the three people that are answering their own point. The other one's watching. I don't know. All right. 11. Whether a salesperson is associated with a broker as an employee or as an independent contractor is important. Okay, so knowing, the question is knowing whether I'm as an employee or as an independent contractor is important for what? For income tax purposes, when applying for a license, when listing a property because independent contractor may list in her own name or when establishing an escrow account. Read again. So, whether a salesperson is associated with a broker as an employee or as an independent contractor is important for what? For income tax purposes, when applying for a license, when listing a property because you can list in your own name, or when establishing the escrow account. Remember, it says salesperson. All right, Monica, if you're trying to find the chat, just answer where you send me the message. Just text there. It's fine. If you cannot find the option to put it into desktop mode, just uh, send me messages on Messenger. All right. So the correct answer for 11 is A. A is an apple for income tax purposes. Because if you're an employee, right, if you are an employee, then your employer has to pay taxes on your behalf or deduct the taxes on your behalf, I'm sorry, right? If you're independent, you are responsible for your own income tax uh, filings. You got it? And, and deductions. When would, if a salesperson is an employee, mm -hmm. does that mean that they're not really a salesperson? Because most um, of them are independent contractors, right? Most of them choose to be independent contractors. Most sense. employers, see the difference is that the sponsoring broker, uh -huh. if you're as an independent, the sponsoring broker cannot require hours. If you're an employee, then they can require hours. But you could also be a mix. You could be an assistant slash, slash salesperson, salesperson okay. right? That would so, probably be the most. But the role is very important to be defined, again, for tax purposes yeah correct 12 a township contains 
six square miles, 36 sections, 18 sections, or 640 acres. A township contains six square miles, 36 sections, 18 sections, don't look, no, no. mind your own, 640 acres. <laughs> and the correct answer for 12 is B as in boy, 36 sections. So Sandra, I'm sorry, Sonia, you answered 640 acres. That would be, okay, uh, Sonia, that, that would be 640 acres would be for one section because one section is one square mile or 640 acres. Um, Monica, you answered A, six square miles. So question 12, you answered A. Uh, they have 36 square miles, okay? 36 square miles. That makes a huge difference. It's either 36 square miles or 36 sections of one square mile each, okay? All right, now you guys need your calculators. Calculators, pay attention. It says a merchant signs a lease for a hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars a month, or six percent of gross sales, whichever is more. Now, in July, the sales were fourteen thousand dollars. How much is the rent for July? Let me repeat the question. You rented the space for eight hundred dollars a month, or 6% of gross sales, whichever is greater or more, right? In July, the gross sales were $14,000. How much is the rent for July? Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to answer this. All right, so whoever has the book open, please close it and throw it away. We're not using the book, Francie. She already gave me the answer, 13C. A is four hundred and eighty dollars <coughs> b and i get a smiley face of course eight hundred dollars c eight hundred forty dollars or d right or d to twenty eight hundred dollars the correct answer for 13 is c <laughs> c as in charlie so francis says she's done this so many times okay so c $840 because it's 6% uh, of 14,000 is greater than the basic uh, $800 a month. Perfect. 14. Jane Smith. All right, if you guys have done this before, if you've done the practice exams before, make sure you want a blank piece of paper and nothing else in front of you as we go. All right? Very, very important for what I'm trying to accomplish today. So, Jane Smith gave the hospital a vacant lot as long as it's used for hospital purposes. The hospital owns a fee determinable, remainder interest, homestead, or leasehold estate. Okay? So, Jane Smith gave to the hospital as long as they use it at, for hospital purposes. The hospital owns what? Okay, so 14. The correct answer for 14 is? A, A is an animal. Uh, animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. 
kind of in it too. I called somebody an animal today, that's why, I guess. Oh, really? It's not me, that's why. Oh, everybody. We're all animals, I'm just in case you didn't know. I call my husband animal. We are all animals. He's from a dragon. <laughs> 14 is A, correct. Feed the total. Good. Why it's feed the turbo? Huh? What it means like feed the turbo? Determinable means conditional or contingent. That means the property is yours as long as you don't change something. Or? Your owner. Or? Conditional or contingent. So, what you do with the property determines your ownership. Feed the turbo. Conditional or contingent. I understand. Contingent that. or conditional? Conditional. Hey, listen. I'm telling you, the microphone behind the camera is way better than the one in the front. Because Sonia funny. just said, ha, 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 her husband. Huh? No, the one, Sonia, the, the, the allied sister. But you can still hear it, it doesn't matter. But anyway, she just laughed at the fact that you called your husband an animal. She's now whispering, so you guys know. <laughs> All right. 15. The buyer moves in and pays expenses <laughs> and loan payments, but the seller retains title in a lease option, purchase money sale, land contract or sale and lease back so the buyer takes over the property right pays all the expenses and loan payments but the seller is still the owner in what type um uh, what type of ownership is a lease option purchase money sale land contract or sale and lease back monica says that microphones are definitely clearer online yeah, I know. You're going to have to put something blocking right behind the camera, right? So you can only hear me instead of the other Anna. <laughs> I can do the whole copy. And the correct answer is B. C. C as in Charlie. C or Why C? Because C. See, a sale and lease back, I sell to you, but I become the tenant. Oh, that's right. I know it is. <laughs> but a land contract or contract for deed, Wait. or also called installment sales contract, is where the seller transfers, allows you to occupy the property and finances the purchase. So the seller becomes the bank. Just like car financing, you pay over several years, okay. but you only become the owner towards the end. I say two words for the land contract. Land contract? I said installment sales or contract for deed. Okay. All right, now I don't need my phone anymore. I have cascaded the, the chat. The seller is the bank, right? Financial. The seller becomes a bank in this scenario. Okay. Next. 16. It says. A tenant's written one-year lease expires on May 1st. A tenant's written one-year lease expires on May 1st. To obtain possession on May 1st, the landlord must give the tenant notice by April 30th, 60 days notice, one month's notice, or no notice. Okay, so again, okay. it says I have a one-year lease that expires on May 1st. 
how much notice does the landlord have to give the tenant? Is it A, C. hold on, notice by April 30th, B, giving time, 60 days notice, C, one month's notice, or D, no notice? And the correct answer is D. D as in David, no Why? notice, because this is an estate for years. Check in, check out. Yeah. Good. Sorry. Now, knowing that there's different leases, right? Mm -hmm. A regular landlord lease is considered an estate for years. A regular landlord lease? Yeah, because, like, because I know, like, who knows again? It's a one-year lease, you're saying? Yeah. It's always that? It's an estate for years. So how come... So month to month is the only one... Or, or year to year or week to week is the only one that's a renewal or periodic estate. All others, the moment there's a check-in, check-out, right. an entrance and an exit date scheduled, and I even get, I, I got you, I don't want you to get tired of doing that. You cannot see it's many people in this class. Okay, so remember I, I gave you the example of going uh, on vacation, the hotel? Check in, check out. And the key feature about that is the, the fact that you already said you're going to leave at the end. Okay. So does the landlord need to call you? Does the, the uh, uh, hotel need to call you and say, hey, uh, don't forget the checkout date? Do they have to? No. You paid for those three days. You paid for that one week or you paid for that one year. But at the end of it, you have to leave unless landlord and tenant come into an agreement. Okay. To renew. Yes. Okay, Brian, but you, it's like, I, it's like, I think it's, it's. Sonia, uh, I know. Sorry, she said she needs Sonia to. to come to school. She said she needs to read the questions better. I know. Um, it's like when the lease finish, you pass, the tenant pass be month by month. If I allow it as a landlord, or if the tenant chooses to continue, but you have to understand. And this is the trick about uh, state exam. You have to understand immediate consequences. If we said, think about it, hotel. Okay. Can you stay longer at the hotel? No. no. Yes. You can. If. You can. If. Uh, yeah. Same thing. Now, it is assumed that as a tenant, if I don't say anything, and as a landlord, you don't say anything, and you allow, <laughs> uh, and you allow, um, the person to stay to continue at the hotel mm -hmm. well then it's an estate at will if you need to leave it's a state that suffers the thing about one-year leases is that once you allow the person to continue it becomes a month to month if you allow can i say hey you're supposed to leave by 6 p.m today may 1st can i say that i can just like the check-in check out uh at the, the hotel they don't have to call you it is assumed that you're leaving. Okay? That's, again, the key feature of a state for years. So the moment it says expires on this date, that's the date you have to leave. Okay? If the question said, but the landlord allowed and received another payment, what happens to it? Well, continue. it continues. Continues, yeah. At will. All right? So, well, Just one quick thing. Okay. Uh, Anna, she says she misses you too. <laughs> Go um, I, would terms beyond, like, um, all the stuff would be set in the lease, mm -hmm. as far as... Notice? Like, at what point, yeah, like, notice for leaving, or a time frame, as far as giving time for the person to move out, or the, it doesn't have to be, because... Didn't I give you one year already? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it is assumed yes. that I don't have to make anything uh, explicit. Beyond that point. Okay. So even when you rent a hotel, they'll put an additional disclosure to say, hey, make sure you leave or you're subject to uh, a penalty, a daily rate or something. Leases, the residential leases, most of the times come with a clause that says if you don't vacate, right? And we talk about this in chapter 12 in leases. If you don't vacate, then you could be liable for double the rent. That's your daily rate. So is, it, is something going to be there in the lease? It's supposed to. 
Okay. Yeah, because look, when you refer to it as a hotel situation, I totally understand what you're saying. But then when it comes to someone living in an apartment and you have a lease, like it's the same firm, thing. Right. So that's where I was getting a little But it's the same thing. Confused or twisted. <laughs> yeah, but, you know? <laughs> but, when, but when you see a hotel, yeah. you're occupying the space for a period of time. Yes. You see a house, you're occupying the space for a period of time. Yes. What are the terms? From this date to that date. Okay. It that's ends. So you should be prepared to leave or a few months before, hey, landlord, I really like the house. Can I renew? Okay. So okay. even like at, I mean, it's more like personal, not so much thing this, but like, I guess two months before you should really have that conversation. Whatever it says on lease. It's kind of ignorant, but I need to go. Read That's it. what I was saying. Like, I have no idea what, what it says. Whatever, if it doesn't say anything, then it's assumed that you're going to leave at that time. So yes, a couple months before by logic uh, or common okay. sense, you should address okay. that with your yeah. landlord. Hey, uh, there's nothing in the lease. Should we? You know, just like, uh, and again, we need to move forward and go faster with these things, mm -hmm. but just like going to a hotel, it doesn't say they're going to call you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say for you to call them. It just says you have to leave by 12 p.m. Yeah, on that day. Them. Courtesy, Anna. Courtesy. I don't think a lot not of obligated. Anyway. I'm sorry? A lot of landlords, I don't. Most don't people don't. Business, that's, why this, that's why this uh, chapter this should be, everything. that's why this chapter should be a course for whoever wants to be a landlord. Chapter 12. In this book that should be out there for you should people. Open. 17. Which of the following situations will not delay closing under TRIB rules? Which of the following situations will not? So we have a closing for tomorrow. Which of these situations is not going to delay this closing to another day? Escrow amount for taxes and insurance was changed. Lender could not document the outcomes <coughs> over time. Applicant decided on a different loan program or pre prepayment penalty was added. Which one of these? 17. Which one of these following situations will not delay closing under TRID rules? A. Will not delay. That means we're still closing tomorrow regardless. Under TRID rules. Is it the escrow amount for taxes and insurance? Is it the lender could not document the applicants over time? Is it applicant decided on a different loan program or prepayment penalty was added? It's very confused, this one. It is. But if we follow common sense again. Who tell you I have a common sense? Unfortunately, I will get sued if I answer that one, so I will avoid it at all costs. <laughs> but I'm saying, guys, if you follow common sense, just like we did before, there's three of these that talk about a loan. There's one that doesn't. Which one will not delay closing under TRID rules? And I told you guys that the only thing that affects a closing is anything that changes the loan. So what does not affect the date? B. A. Why? Because B. C, I put A, and now you confuse. It's the third time you confuse me, and I put wrong. Stop it. I don't want to see you anymore. So, Anna, why did you change? Because I, I told you when you're talking, and now, now it's just okay. But listen to me three wrongs because of you. Okay, so two you know. it's mine, and three it's yours. Okay, listen to me. So, what I was trying to say is that three of these answers involve loans lender right. B, loan C, loan D. Because prepayment is prepayment is regarding the loan. The only one that doesn't talk about loans is the first one, which is cool. escrow or money set aside for taxes and insurance has nothing to do with a loan. So the fact that the, the escrow, the money you have to put aside for tax and insurance was changed, does not change the loan itself, okay? How would that change the loan itself? No, but... Doesn't. Go ahead, Stephanie. I guess I was thinking about it like, for instance, like if you pay your taxes 
yeah. to your right to your mortgage company, I would have I would have thought that that would have affected it. You don't pay your taxes to the mortgage company. They they bundle they hold, the payments. Right. They hold it in an escrow account separate from right. the loan. So the taxes still do not affect the loan. Tax insurance yeah. goes to the city or the insurance company, not the loan. I guess okay. three of them here, right. lender. If well, I cannot document, sorry, if I cannot document your overtime, how can I confirm your income? You yes. got it? Yeah. If you decided to go on a different loan application, like a different type of loan from a fixed to adjustable, you've changed the loan terms again. And finally, prepayment penalty was added, not in Jersey. So if they add, they need to restructure the whole thing minus the prepayment penalty. Sorry, go ahead. So it's like if you're at closing, and the taxes have to be prorated if they're paid up to a certain time. Okay. So then that would change, mm -hmm. and, but that wouldn't affect the closing. Yeah. Something like that. The, yeah. the, maybe insurance for something too. Like Correct. the cost would have been less or more. I'm gonna sit you over. You guys cannot be together. You're like, literally, you're like Sonia and Karen. Oh, I won't be. You're, so you had the correct answer? Oh, you had the wrong answer. No, I had it right. I just said it wrong. I guess I was in between both of them. No, it's A. Oh, hey. duh. You said B, I but it's said A. B. That's what I'm so confused. See, I'm lost. All right. You're at 112 Java Street, Street 107 okay. in Newark, New Jersey, 07105. Just in case you're lost. Okay. The GPS coordinates are. <laughs> All right. So next, we have 18. We're going very fast at this. Uh, the Jensen's own property that the city wants to use to extend the airport runway. The Jensen's refuse to sell. The city may acquire this property by its rights to eminent domain, easement, accession, or recapture. The city wants a property that's privately owned. The private owner, Jensen's, they don't want to sell, but the city may still acquire the property through its right of A, eminent domain, B, easement, C, accession, or D, recapture. Write down your answer, and the correct answer is A. A is an apple. Eminent domain. The government has the right to the property through. Hmm? Um. A is an animal, yes. So <laughs> the um, the town has the right to the property through eminent domain or process of condemnation. How does it tie that eminent domain to refusal? Like if the seller, if the property owner yeah, okay. refuses to sell. I would just say it's going to be stolen from you. But yeah, if you refuse to sell, they still take it. So they still take it, yeah. 19. Cool. 19, it says right here, Georgia Brown sold her listed home herself. Georgia Brown sold her listed home herself. We got eight people watching, only three answering. Okay. Four answering. So it's like half and half. Uh, Georgia Brown sold her listed home herself and did not owe anyone a commission. The listing she has signed was probably a multiple listing, net listing, exclusive right to sell listing, or exclusive agency listing. Now, before you guys answer, before you jump at it, real quick, it says, did not know anyone. Did not say to one person, said to anyone. Therefore, therefore there's more agents. Okay? Think about it closely. Before you do this. Correct answer is multiple listing, net listing, exclusive right to sell listing, or exclusive agency listing. So she listed her home herself and did not owe, she sold her home herself and did not owe anyone a commission. The listing she signed was probably, and the correct answer is D. D as in David, because if it was exclusive right to sell, she had she owed the commission regardless. Okay? Very good. 20. 
It says right here, federal income tax regulations allow a homeowner to reduce taxable income by amounts paid for interest and property tax, repairs and maintenance, insurance premiums, or all of the above. Write down the answer. Federal income tax regulations allow a homeowner to reduce their taxable income by amounts paid for interest and property tax, repairs and maintenance, insurance premiums, or all of the above. At the end of the year, you have to declare your taxes. You know that, right? Yeah. So they ask you always, how much did you pay in X? Some stuff is taxable, some of this, or tax deductible, some of this stuff is not. Correct answer for 20 is A is an apple, or A is an animal, or A is an anise. So, they always send you something in the mail, which is the total amount of interest that you paid over the years, over the whole year. They also send you the property tax bill. When you declare your taxes, they deduct what you paid in interest to somebody else and taxes to somebody else. Repairs and maintenance are not tax deductible if it fits your primary home and insurance premiums yeah. are not deductible. So therefore, all of the above would be incorrect as well. Okay, so interest and property tax. Monica, did I explain that to you? Uh, as far as Sonia, always put the number of the question before you put the answer. Monica, you should have known that. Why? <laughs> she says, damn, I should have known that. Oh, I'm sorry, she said, darn. I just cursed on my TV. <laughs> Actually, it's a private group. <laughs> That's it. Actually, it's broadcasting oh, to the public. Online. YouTube. Yes, question. question? Because I get it in the mail each year. Because it didn't say a multi-family home, is that the reason why it's not B? Um, well, A would always be there, regardless. Correct. If it said multi-family home, then B, it's not a multi-family. If it said investment. Investment, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. think that's where it confused me. Yeah, if it said investment, then A and B would be included. Okay. Yeah. 21. A grantor becomes a lessee. Grantor becomes a lessee. And the grantee becomes the lessor. In a land contract, lease option, Sale and lease back or wraparound mortgage. A grantor becomes a lessee and the grantee becomes a lessor in a land contract, lease option, sale and lease back or wraparound mortgage. And the correct answer for 21 is C. C is in Charlie because the grantor is a seller. So they sell to the grantee, the buyer, and then they lease it from the, the, the buyer. Okay? So sale, lease back. Perfect. Ah, everybody's on point. Don't forget Wednesday is the exam. I mean, Thursday is the exam. No? Okay. No, they're on point. That's what I'm saying. So they're good to take the exam. 22. Ben Wolf has defaulted in payment of several debts. And the court has ordered his property sold to satisfy them. Which of the following would be considered a prior lien? That means priority. Who's first, right? The outstanding mortgage dated and recorded one year ago, the current real estate taxes, the mechanics lien for work that was started two months before the mortgage was recorded, or a court judgment 
rendered and recorded last month. So they defaulted and now the court ordered a foreclosure. What they're asking is, which of the following would have priority over the others? Who's the prior lien? Is it an outstanding mortgage dated and recorded a year ago, current real estate taxes, a mechanics lien that was done two months before the mortgage was recorded, or a court judgment rendered and recorded last month? And the correct answer for 22 is B as in boy, because current real estate taxes, real estate taxes are always, always, always first. Even though it says current, remember, if there's an open bill, it must be prorated to the day you purchase. So taxes first, then in order of when it was recorded. Okay. What did I do? Okay. 23. A guarantee that the lender will commit to a certain percentage for the cost of the loan is called a tariff security, a requirement for a prepayment penalty, a balloon payment, or a rate lock. A guarantee that the lender will commit to a certain percentage for the cost of the loan is called tariff security, requirement for a prepayment penalty, balloon payments, or rate lock. And the correct answer for 23 is e. D as in David, rate lock. Lock is the guarantee, the rate is that percentage for the cost of the loan. Monica goes like, hmm, maybe D. <laughs> yep, the baby was correct. 24. What is the function of Penny May? Anybody remembers Grandma? Penny May? Mm -hmm. They buy FHA loans, they insure FHA loans, they make FHA loans, or they review FHA loans. Write down the answer. What is the function of Fannie Mae? To buy, insure, make, or review FHA loans. And the correct answer for 24 is? A. A is an apple. So FHA operates in the secondary market. They buy loans after they've been originated. Very good. 25. Continue education courses may be taken in the classroom only, exclusively over the internet, entirely by mail, or by mail, internet, or classroom. Continuing education courses may be taken classroom only, over the internet, by mail, or all three. Correct answer for 25 is? D as in David, for C credits, any way, shape, or form, as long as you do them. For free licensing, got to be here. Okay? Perfect. 26. As an agent for a seller, who do I represent? Seller. Great. So as an agent for the seller, a real estate broker may promise that the seller will accept any offer that meets the terms of the listing contract, solicit the buyer for an offer to purchase, sign an acceptance to a bona fide purchase offer, or refuse to forward a ridiculously low offer. As an agent for the seller, a broker may do what? Promise that the seller will accept any offer that meets the terms of the contract, who am I promising you to? The buyer? I don't represent the buyer, right? B, solicit the buyer for an offer to purchase. C, sign an acceptance of any good offer, right? Or refuse to forward a ridiculously low offer. The answer for 26 is B. B as in boy, our job as representatives of the seller is to find a ready, willing and able buyer. Mm -hmm. 
That's it. And Cain as well. Three seven. Very good. I like this class. They're on point. Twenty-seven. The new combined federal trip. New combined federal trip requires a lender to provide the loan estimate within three business days of a completed loan application. Forbids the use of the term annual percentage rate. Prevents a broker from saying FHA financing available in the classified ad or requires that all mortgage loan applications to be made on a standard government form. All right, so real quick, Sonia is asking what is a bona fide? It's pretty much a good valid offer. That's in this case, that's what it is, a good valid offer. It's not our job to accept them, it's the seller's job to accept them, okay? Now, 27, again, the new combined trid requires what? Forbids what? Prevents what? Or requires again what? Correct answer for 27 is? A. A as in apple. See, <laughs> through trid, they have to provide you an LE within three business days after you applied for the loan. B says forbids the term annual percentage rates. No. The Truth in Lending Act requires the term annual percentage rate. So B is wrong. C says preventing a broker from saying FHA financing available. Of course not. It's ridiculous as well, right? And the last one, mortgage applications on standard government forms. No, each lender has their own form. Okay, so the only correct one would be A, requires the lender to provide a loan estimate within three business days of a completed loan application. Does anybody remember what is a completed loan application? When it's considered complete? It's it to be loan application. Loan application. What do you need to make it complete? Name, address, um, offer, no, no, no. Uh. No, no, no. signature. Uh. No, it's forty. Mortgage terms. Name, address. Oh, five. Five, six. six. Yeah. Oh, aliens. Aliens, yes. So what are aliens? Address, <laughs> loan amount, interest. Interest. Aliens. Interest? What interest? Uh, income. 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 <laughs> Estimated value of the property, okay. name of the person borrowing, and social security number. Okay. At least I got the alien part. You got the alien. That was great. <laughs> uh, Monica, you said you got mixed up with this one, with 27. What is your question? Monica, what is your question? Oh, okay, now you understand. Got it. Sorry. 28. <laughs> I need to read slower. So <clears throat> let's see. Sonia said the same thing earlier. Monica's saying it now. Most of you are thinking about it, and I've been telling you all this. Read slower. Take your time. I just told somebody taking the exam, pace yourself. Right? Because like five minutes after starting the exam, this person was already on answer on question number 10. I'm like, it's been five minutes. Take your time. Okay? 28. The amount of money that would be paid by a buyer to a seller, both well informed and neither under duress, is real properties, exchange value, market value, appraised value, or salvage value. The amount of money that would be paid to a buyer or seller, 
both well informed and neither under duress, meaning they're not being forced into it. It's the real properties, the exchange value, market value, appraised value, or salvage value. And the correct answer for 28 is B as in boy, market value. Why? <clears throat> what happens if it's not market value? It is market value for this reason. Market value is when the buyer is not forced to buy, the seller is not forced to sell. They both know of the assets defects, and potential of the property, and reasonable exposure on the market. Chapter 16. That's market value, the true market value. In what case it would exchange value exist? Because I was kind of like teeter-tottering on... Exactly. Okay. It doesn't. The exchange value is you got something 500,000, I got something 500,000, that's exchange. Yeah. How do we know it's worth 500,000? Market value. How do we get to market value? Appraisal. Comps. You got it? And is there such a thing as a salvage? What is salvage? It's the same. To what is a salvage in, in the car? Okay. Right? So we don't have a salvage value. Junk it. That's what it is. Okay. All right. Calculators. Property is listed for $160,000 and sells for $150,000 in a town that reassesses at sales price on transfer. The tax rate is $1.93 per $100. How much is the tax bill? How much is the tax bill? So, is assessed value based on sales price, based on listed price? What is it based on in this case? How much did it sell for? All right, 150,000. The tax rate is $1.93 per hundred. How much is the tax bill? Okay, is it? $289.50, $308.80, or $3,088. 29, the correct answer is C, C as in Charlie, $2,895 yes. is the annual tax bill. Did everybody get it? Yeah. Let me ask you something. Well, I don't know. Okay. A dollar ninety-three per hundred means one point nine three percent. Got it? Every time you see per hundreds, it's percent. Take the dollar sign out, add the percentage sign. So one hundred and fifty thousand times one nine three percent equals 2,895. Got it? Question? The question is like, the taxes, it's like all the same for all towns? No. How's the taxes all the same for all the towns? No, I'm just asking. Every town has different needs, different demands. Newark needs a lot more policing, a lot more emergency services than Chatham. Chatham doesn't have as many people, so less taxes. Okay, it's all the price uh, they list him. It's the right price. That's what you're asking? No. In this case, this town 
it assesses at sales price. Some towns assess at 16% of whatever price they believe to be. Some towns assess at 154%. So it varies between 16.5% to 154% of value. How do we find that, find that out? The town will tell you. In this town, it's assessed at 60% of market value. Let's find out what 60% of 150 is. Okay, but each town is different. You have to know each town's rules. And that's the reason I focus in one town only. 30. A real estate broker who received a commission for the sale of a home in a transaction in which neither the buyer nor the seller was a principal acted as a transaction broker, seller's agent, buyer's broker, or dual agent. I received a commission, but I did not represent the buyer nor the seller. Write down the answer for 30. For 30, the correct answer is A, a transaction broker, because transaction broker represents the transaction and not the seller, not the buyer. Okay, perfect. But we're still entitled to commission. Damn. Darn. Darn, right? <laughs> All right, 31. Which of the following is not essential to an enforceable real estate sales contract? Earnest money, writing, offer and acceptance, or consideration. Which of these is not essential for an enforceable real estate sales contract? Correct answer for 31 is A is an apple because earnest money is a good faith deposit. It's not essential. But if it's a real estate contract, it must be in writing, thanks to the statute of uh, frauds, right? It must be in writing. There must be offer and acceptance and exchange of value consideration. Good. 32. The lender has agreed to finance furnished condominium units. The lender has agreed to a package mortgage, Blanket mortgage, shared equity mortgage, or wraparound mortgage. The lender has agreed to finance furnished condominium units. The lender agreed to a package mortgage, blanket mortgage, shared equity mortgage, or wraparound mortgage. And the correct answer for 32 is... A is an apple, package mortgage, because it's a package deal. The condo plus everything inside. For condos? Uh, for condos, yes, because traditionally they are furnished. When they're being presented. Condos are yeah. usually furnished? Yeah. There's a bunch right now, but you have the model home. This is what I want. Model home, yes. That's what I want. Okay. Right? Uh, can you go over blanket mortgage again? Blanket mortgage, every time you hear blanket. Okay. Oh, that you seem pregnant. No. Uh, every time. You, <laughs> like, <laughs> baby blanket. Baby blanket, right? Every time you see blanket, think about subdivisions. You're buying a big lot and you're going to cut it into small pieces, so you need a loan that covers the whole thing cool. as you're dividing. A quilt? A quilt, like patch quilt. Like it. <laughs> Monica's laughing. <laughs> For the next class, you can bring up the quilt. I'll bring up the quilt. She's like, right. <laughs> All right. You're good? 33. A married couple who meets the ownership and occupancy requirements may sell a principal residence with no federal capital gains tax on profits up to 
married couple who meet ownership and occupancy requirements may sell a principal residence with no federal capital uh, gain tax on profit up to A, 125000 B, 250000 C, 500000 or D, any amount. Married couple. They don't pay federal capital gains on profits up to Correct answer for 33 is C. C. If it's a married couple, they're exempt up to $500,000. Okay? All right. Sonia was asking me, Sonia was asking me, what about wraparound mortgage? So, real quick, going back, package mortgage is when you're buying a property and its contents, like furniture. Blanket mortgages for subdivisions, and then wraparound. We're going to skip shared equity. Wraparound mortgage. Shared equity is there's a partner. Uh, so the uh, insurance companies usually have participation or shared equity partnership. I just skip that because you won't find that question. Wraparound mortgage is where I lend to you. I'm, I'm the seller, and I become the lender without releasing my mortgage with the bank. So you pay me and I pay the lender. You pay me and I pay the lender. You pay me and then I pay them. So your mortgage wraps around my mortgage for them. After a few years, if things go right, this installment sales contract or land contract or contract for deed gets released. Because the only way for you to do this is when the deed does not transfer. Because the moment the deed transfers, the bank can say, hey, where's my money? So yours will not wrap around, you will be forced to finance. Okay? Sonia, did that help? That was question 32, right? 33 was C. Okay, th okay, yes. She said, okay, thanks. Usually when I get okay, thanks, it's like that. I guess but then a yes came right after I'm happy so 34 <laughs> the amount of commission due a salesperson is determined by agreement between the broker and seller agreement between the broker and salesperson the local association of realtors or state law the amount of commission due to the salesperson is determined by who Okay. Agreement between the broker and the seller, agreement between the broker and salesperson, the local association of realtors, or state law. Write down the answer, and the correct answer is B. 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 It's the commission to the salesperson, not to the broker. Commission to the salesperson is the commission split between the broker and the salesperson. What is the answer? B. B. It's asking for the commission to the salesperson, not to the broker. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're still thinking? Yes. Why? Huh? Why are you thinking? It's Okay, but you got it or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it asks for the commission to the brokerage, then it will be A. It's between the broker and the seller, not the salesperson. We represent the broker, so we negotiate on their behalf, but it's between them. How we get paid as salespeople is between us and our broker. Because your broker might say 70-30, my broker says 80-20. Your broker says 60-40, and so on. It's independent between you and your broker. You got to read carefully. Okay. I just have a few that I just questioned about. So not only you, I'm addressing everybody. Monica's like, oh, wow. <laughs> Shaking my head. Uh, darn. <laughs> Should I actually put emojis on there? Uh, no, emojis I got from Francie, Sonia, and Noel. 
Monica is not playing the emoji game. Not today. <laughs> uh, all right, 35. The practice of refusing to lend, refusing to lend. This should tell you already what it is. But mortgage money in certain neighborhoods is called blockbusting, redlining, bird dogging, or steering. The practice of refusing <laughs> the emoji. Uh, the practice of refusing to lend mortgage money in certain neighborhoods is called blockbusting, redlining, bird dogging, or steering. Correct answer for 35 is B as in boy. The moment you see refusing to lend or refusing to insure, automatically redlining. Okay? 36. In a real estate sale, transfer tax fees are usually paid by the seller, state, buyer, or broker. Who pays transfer tax fees? Seller, state, buyer, or broker? Write down the answer. Realty transfer fees. Who pays realty transfer fees? Mm -hmm. And the correct answer is A. A is an apple. The seller always pays realty transfer fees. Chapter 21. Okay. If you want a reference. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I saw it on your face and I read your mind for a second. Perfect. Shall we play my yeah. If you guys have difficulty with any particular question, just ask me which chapter it is, and I'll let you know so you can review it. No, I got you. Yeah? <laughs> okay. 37. Which of the following should you accept as evidence of proof of ownership in an estate in land? Quit claim deed, title insurance policy, warranty deed, or affidavit. Proof of ownership or evidence of title. Which one of these? There's only four. Which one is it? The correct answer for 37 is B as in boy, title insurance policy. Anna, if you answered affidavit, affidavit is a sworn statement. It could be for anything. That's right. I know. But uh, deeds are not proof of ownership, so A and C are completely out of it. A sworn statement is out of it. The only correct answer is B, title insurance policy. The other ones would be certificate of title, right? Yeah. Torrance certificate or abstract and attorney's opinion of title. 38. An appraiser would not generally use which of these items to determine the replacement cost of the building? An appraiser would not, pay attention to the question, use which of these items to determine the replacement cost of the building? So this is the cost approach. Square footage, unit in place, original cost or quantity survey. This is the cost approach. Cost approach is based on replacement or reproduction cost of a building. Which one of these is not used in the cost approach? And the correct answer for 38 is C as in Charlie. The original cost is not the replacement or reproduction cost. Because the cost approach is how much does it cost to rebuild, not to purchase and rebuild, okay? Chapter 16, cost approach. So there's uh, the sales comparison approach or market data approach. There's a cost approach and there's an income approach to value, to figure out values of properties. So in the replacement or reproduction cost, we look at the building structure and how much does it cost to build something. 
Sonia, you got it? All right. 39. Which of the following hazards requires a federal disclosure form in a residential purchase? Radon, lead based paint, formaldehyde, or asbestos? Which one requires a federal disclosure form? You jump too fast. I know this. I know you know, but wait until the end. You never know. So, uh, Sonia, we'll, I'll address that one uh, later on or just review chapter uh, 16, cost approach. It explains it a little bit better. So, 39. The correct answer is B. B as in boy, lead based paint. If the property was built before 1978, it requires a statement in the contract and also a pamphlet about lead hazards. 40. Frank rents an apartment under a two-year written lease. Two-year written lease. After one year, the building is sold. Which statement is true? The sale has no effect on Frank's tenancy. Frank must renegotiate with the new owner. Frank must leave after 60 days notice by the owner, or the new owner is free to increase the rent immediately. The building is sold. There's a new owner. What happens to the tenant? Doesn't change anything. They must renegotiate the terms. They must leave after notice or the new owner can rent increase right away. <coughs> 40. The correct answer is A is an apple because the new owner must honor the old lease as long as it's in effect and the tenant is paying. Yes. Cannot, it cannot increase. It's not my fault that the house was sold. I have an agreement with you. Yeah. You sell it to her and now she can increase me just because? No, no, we have no, a standing no, contract. It's like you can increase the percentage. Yeah, whatever the, the, yeah. the town allows. Yes. What happens if it's like you own the house, I'm your family, oh, right? Yeah. You're selling it and you're like, look, dirt cheap, two year lease, $600. But really, that's not market value. Then you can renegotiate, correct? Why? Why what? You we have, have a lease? Yeah, you have a lease with me, but like you're the owner, we're family. So you're like, look, I'm going to give you a two year lease at $600. The new owner just has to deal with it? Yeah. Absolutely, it's a lease. A contract is a contract. But what happens if it's not to market standard? You wait until the lease expires. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to honor it. Now, here's the thing when you bought the house, yeah. a rent roll should have been provided to you, and you would have seen $600. Hey, what's going on here? I'll buy the house if this tenant leaves. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. So, really? I thought that there would be something against that. Like, nope. if you can prove that it's not market value, that there would be somewhere to go around it. Nope. Okay. So, if, if you're somebody that's been living there for 10 years, are we at market value compared no. to, to somebody that just rents no, it out? That's why. If you, bought at, if you bought at $300 and you were charging 600 but now you're selling at 700 the mortgage payment is completely different for the new owner. That so sucks for the new owner that did not do his due diligence. Or the realtor that's going to get sued because of that. Okay. Or the attorney getting sued for not demanding a rent roll. Well, no, it's fine that you It's fine that you knew. I just didn't realize that you didn't have an option of no, doing that's, something. No, but that's what I'm trying to say. The attorney right, should yeah. mention, the, the realtor should, should mention. mention. Right. Okay, you have to know the rent. Of course. All right. 41. In 1977, a family purchased their house and lot for $53,000. They made no major improvements. They recently sold it for $224,550. How much do they owe on their gain? A. No calculators needed. 
No. A, nothing. B, nothing if they purchase another home within 24 months. C, 15%. Or D, 20%. In 1977, a family purchased their house and lot for 53000 Later, they sell it for $224,000. How much do they owe on their gain? Nothing. Nothing if they bought another one within two years. 15% or 20%. Correct answer for 41 is... A. Why? Nothing. Because it's your family home. Let's start with that. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, my God. That's right. I know. Yes, but... That's it tricky. is. Yeah. Oh, Why? Because it doesn't specify husband and wife. It could have been. No, no, it's a family with four husbands. Okay, with children and you know, family. That's family. What if they're single? Oh, a single. What if yeah. they're single? Still nothing. Still nothing. Yeah. yeah. Because it's the family home, single. It's two hundred fifty thousand. It's under. I know. It's that. under two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, you're right, Bruno. Right, I know I'm right. Thank you. <laughs> 42. Oh, uh, Monica says she would have picked B. So here's the thing. There's no rule that you have to buy another home within 24 months. Not for family home. Not the house rate. If it's an investment property, right, it's still, it's still not 24 it's months. It's now. six months. Okay? Either that or 15% or 25%. Okay? Okay. What chapter for question 41? So this would be chapter 17. I'm sorry, chapter 8, because it's a family home. Sorry, my bad. Uh, it's the last, excuse me, you can hear everything, I'm sorry. It's the last thing on chapter 8. I'm going to put it. Yeah, pain, you want something for pain? Put it there. Yeah. Tell them to go into. Oh, actually. Huh? So I have something for pain for me, for my back. So. All right, 42. A realtor is any active broker, an attorney, in fact, any licensed agent, or a member of a trade association. A realtor is any active broker. <laughs> All right, you guys are quick now. Any active broker, attorney, in fact, licensed agent, or member of a trade association. The correct answer is D. D as in David. A realtor is a member of the National Association of Realtors. A broker might not be a realtor, Sonia. They have to be a member. 43. A broker received two offers at once, one through a salesperson in his office and one through a competitor. The broker should submit the salesperson's offer first because he is the lister, submit both offers at the same time, submit the competitor's offer first as a matter of courtesy, or reject both offers and, set, and tell the seller to try for a higher price. A broker receives two offers at once, one through the salesperson in his office, one through a competitor. What should they do? Correct answer for 43 is? Did I give it to you? B as in boy. It doesn't matter who brought the offer. It doesn't matter how ridiculous the offer is. It must be presented always. 44. The act by which all parties agree to the terms of the contract is known as Legality of the object, consideration, meeting of the minds, or informed consent. The act by which all parties agree to the terms of the contract. 
Okay, an agreement is called C as in Charlie, meeting of the minds. We're both in agreement. Our minds are in agreement. Okay. 25. A refusal to rent to a couple because they are unmarried violates no law, New Jersey law, Civil Rights Act of 1866, or Fair Housing Act of 1968. Refusal to rent to a couple because they are unmarried violates no law, New Jersey law, Civil Rights Act of 1866, or Fair Housing Act of 1968. And the correct answer? It's B. B as in boy. Jersey law. And if you guys didn't get it, uh, go to page 54. So write down page 54. There's a table there, a cheat sheet, that says that marital status is protected under Jersey law. 46. Exemption from a portion of property taxes is available to qualified veterans, qualified senior citizens, qualified nonprofit organizations, or all of the above. So an exemption or reduction to the whole taxes is available to whom? 46. The correct answer is D as in David, everybody here qualifies for either reduction or full exemption. 47. Those who are entitled to inspect all documents recorded in the county clerk's office include bank employees, private individuals, tax assessors, or all of the above. Who can check all documents recorded in the county clerk's office? The correct answer is everybody, because they're public records. Yeah, public records. Everybody's entitled to check them. All right. The seller lists a home for $400,000. And the listing broker tells a prospective buyer to submit a low offer because the seller is desperate. The buyer offers $320,000 and the seller accepts. In this instance, the broker violated the agency relationship. The broker did not act improperly because no one was hurt. The action was proper because it obtained a quick offer or the broker was properly looking out for the buyer's interests. Look at the question again. Seller lists for 400 and the listing broker who represents the seller told the buyer to submit a low offer. Which one is the correct answer? It's so that make me confused. Nope, there's no way to be confused here. Who do you represent? The seller. The seller. Yes, sir. You're right. Thank you. I know. Thank you. So the correct answer is A is an apple. The broker violated the agency relationship because as an agent for the seller, they have to look out for the sales interests, not the buyer. So the moment I told the buyer, hey, low offer, I violated my relationship with the seller. Okay. You say over there, the broker tells the buyer. The buyer. To submit a law offer? Yeah. Who do I represent? The seller is not right, I agree. Okay. So you agree that it's A? No, no, I put A, but it's like... Okay. So what are you questioning? I'm not... Nothing. Continue. No, no, because the broker was probably looking out for the buyer's interest. But who do I represent? You represent... You can represent both. Does it say that sign. I... Does it say that I represent both? No. Thank you. Welcome. Things to look at I know, or look out for. Mm -hmm. No, but this is valid. This is actually the type of thing that will make you 
wonder in the state exam. So well, you have to. You to wrong regardless? I'm sorry. Wouldn't you be going against agency relationship regardless? So the fact that you're telling the buyer to to put a low offer, regardless, yes. But her question was, okay. if you could represent the buyer as well. Yes, yes. they have to sign. Have but to in terms of price, I cannot tell the buyer yeah. or the seller anything as far as price. Yeah. Yeah. I can only represent both in what's called material facts. Let's look at the property being destroyed, right? That's a material fact. Let's look at the fact that the buyer has an FHA or conventional, Mr. Seller, this is what it is, FHA or conventional, mm -hmm. right? But I cannot tell one party or the other to submit a higher or lower offer. Yeah. It yeah. still violates agency. Absolutely. Yeah. 49. When real property is sold at a foreclosure sale and not enough money is realized to pay the mortgage, the lender may seek a deficiency judgment, foreclose on other real estate owned in that county, county, I'm sorry, uh, file a garnishment of the broker's wages, uh, borrower's wages, thank you, or ask the court to seize the borrower's bank accounts. If there's a foreclosure and not enough money to satisfy the debt, what can the, the lender or the bank do? 49. The correct answer is A as an apple. Seek a deficiency judgment. Deficiency means they recovered less than what you owe. They can come after that difference. Yeah. 50. All right, we're almost halfway. Which of the following represents economic obsolescence? A rusted boiler, poor floor, floor plan, outmoded plumbing, or car lot next door? Which the following represents economic obsolescence? There's three types of obsolescence according to chapter 16 and the cost approach. There's the physical obsolescence, there's the functional obsolescence, and there's economic or external obsolescence. Which one of these represents economic obsolescence? I already gave you the answer. Yeah. 50 is D as in David. Because economic obsolescence is external obsolescence. Something out of your control, out of your property. Okay, chapter 16, under cost approach. Chapter 16, right? Yep. 51. Can we have a break? At 55. The law that requires most real estate contracts to be in writing is known as the statute of dissent, estoppel, frauds, or limitations. And the correct answer. C is in Charlie. Statue of Frauds requires that everything be in writing so you can get paid your commission. 52. Bart O'Malley is a licensed salesperson who completed a difficult transaction. Bart may accept a bonus from a grateful seller, buyer, his own broker, or any of the above. Who can he receive payments from? He's a licensed salesperson. Who can pay a licensed salesperson? The correct answer for 52 is C. C as in Charlie, only a broker can pay a salesperson, yeah. his associated salesperson. Okay? Perfect. 53. Almost there. Calculators. 
a custom built house containing 2,320 square feet has been constructed on a $28,000 lot. Construction costs are $50.25 per square foot. Other fees and costs total 2780 What is the total cost of this property? So you need to figure out the cost to purchase, the cost to build, and closing costs. And the correct answer, I'm just kidding, just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you need to know the cost to build, the cost to purchase is right there, and the cost to close is right there. You have 2,320 square feet. The cost to build is fifty dollars and twenty-five cents. Okay. Okay, Anna. Purchase price and closing costs. Total cost of the property. No, you have to know what the total cost is. We're almost done. I'll give you a break in a second. Is it? Wait. I'm waiting. They're waiting at home too because nobody's giving me the answer I yet. Okay, I know the answer. Okay, good for you. So, we're getting there. It says A, 116,580, 144,000, 144,580, or 147,360. The correct answer is D. D as in David. Because the first thing you need to figure out is the cost to build, which is 2,320 square feet times $50.25. Once you have that number, you're going to add $28,000 cost of purchase of the lot plus 2,780, which is the closing costs. And the answer is D as in David. 54. From which of the following does one obtain an FHA loan? From <laughs> Monica celebrating. Yay. All right. From which of the following does one obtain an FHA loan? Federal Housing Authority, Federal Home Loan Board, a local FHA lender, or the Farmers Home Agency? All these acronyms are wrong, but okay. From which of the following do we obtain? An FHA loan. Is it Federal Housing Authority, Federal Home Loan Board, Local FHA Lender, or Farmers Home Agency? And the correct answer is C is in Charlie because the loan is insured by FHA, which is Federal Housing Administration, but the loan comes from a local lender. Always. 55, and then a quick break. A broker may not act for the buyer and the seller without notifying both of this fact after the sale is closed, having both sign a sales contract, having exclusive agreements signed by each, or obtaining prior written consent of both parties. 55, a broker cannot act on behalf of both the buyer and the seller, without what? D. Write down the answer. Write down the answer. And the correct answer for 55 is? D as in David. You have to have prior written consent for both parties. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to give you a quick break, just five minutes. Bathroom break. Take advantage at home as well. And we'll be right back for another 55 in one hour.
one hour. We wait 